Now we would like to start a press conference by Minister Motegi. Minister, please. From my part, I have two points in the beginning. First of all, with regard to raising of the uh, infectious disease warning level, the COVID-19 uh, is spreading mainly in emerging and developing countries. The situation requires continued vigilance. As of the 12th of May, the more than 4.1 million cases have been confirmed in 187 countries and regions, and the world death toll stands at around 280,000. The infection is spreading in some regions. However, that these regions are changing over time. Against this backdrop, in view of such a situation, taking into consideration various factors comprehensively, including the number of cases per population of 10,000, newly, this time around, for 13 countries, we will raise warning level on infectious disease to level three, namely avoid all travel. More specifically, these countries are as follows. In Asia, Maldives, Central and Latin America, Uruguay, Colombia, Bahama, Honduras, Mexico. In Europe, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. In Africa, Cap Verde, Gabon, Guinea-Bissau, San Tome Principe, and Equatorial Guinea. So these 13 countries. So as a result, a total of 100 countries and regions are now at level three. Now, regarding the warning level on infectious disease, upon the raising of the warning level, we will make coordination among ministries concerned and following discussion at the National Security Council and the government headquarters for COVID-19, Shortly, we will add these countries to regions subject to denial of entry and implement border control, including strengthened quarantine measures. With regard to repatriation of Japanese nationals from abroad, so far, those who have returned to Japan by now is almost 9,000. There are people who are still wanting to come back to Japan, namely, from 30 countries, about 300. So of these 300, about a half of them, about 150 Japanese nationals, are due to leave foreign countries and return to Japan within a day or two. And we will continue to secure uh, security and safety of the uh, Japanese nationals abroad, and we would like to provide maximum support. Let's open the floor. So for those of you who have questions, please uh, come to the microphone. Rikitake Son. I'm uh, uh, Rikitake with Sanke newspaper. Yesterday, uh, seven country teleconferences held among seven countries yesterday. According to the media report from the minister, you uh, mentioned about the uh, uh, importance of taking care of various uh, issues, keeping in mind a possible international order after the coronavirus situation has ended. Could you, uh, can you uh, please uh, tell me what uh, was discussed to the extent possible? And when you, what do you think uh, about a possible international order after the coronavirus situation has ended? First of all, with regard to yesterday's uh, teleconference meeting among seven countries, uh, we'd like to uh, show, uh, uh, get, provide you with uh, information immediately after this press conference, and uh, including an international order after the coronavirus situation has ended. The expansion of uh, COVID-19 is not something that the only one country can stand up to in an effective manner. So based upon that, this kind of situation uh, requires uh, collaboration and cooperation in the international community. So this is a great opportunity to recognize that once again. So following the current situation, uh, in order to cope with the infectious disease in an effective manner, uh, we should be able to uh, uh, share the information and uh, uh, knowledge as uh, held by 
many uh, countries in a free and transparent and speedy manner. And uh, so we are confirmed uh, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, push ahead with the uh, health uh, uh, systems uh, among those countries. So verification of the um, uh, the situation as well as uh, the some extending support for the developing uh, countries where the health system is vulnerable. So we, I mentioned that it is very important to support the uh, from medium to long term perspectives uh, to extend support to the developed countries. So starting from the very beginning stage, how we are going to share the information uh, should be considered and uh, transparency and speed at which that uh, information should be delivered uh, need to be emphasized as well. Amidst this, uh, whether WHO has been functioning properly when a similar situation prevails in the future, what kind of function should be um, strengthened in WHO? Such a discussion is going to be needed as well. The mobility restrictions are put in place right now. So as the coronavirus situation is contained, how we are going to relax restrictive measures. Such a discussions need to be held as well. And uh, for the countries where the medical uh, system is vulnerable, we need to extend support to them. So as an international community, how we should be extending support to such uh, uh, countries where the medical system is vulnerable. Mr. Oyabu. Yomiuri Oyabu is my name. The minister talked about WHO just now. So I have a question related to WHO. From the 18th, w, uh, World Health Assembly will be held. Regarding this, uh, you just mentioned that there is a need to strengthen WHO's function, and that Taiwan is not a party to uh, WHO. And uh, once again, could you express your uh, stance and position regarding the Taiwan's position? Well, I have been saying this repeatedly. In such a situation, the international cooperation is needed. International community has to make a concerted effort. That is important. And also, we should not leave any geographical vacuum or void. In order to address global health challenges, such a geographical vacuum is not very good. Therefore, this has been a consistent position on our part. From this perspective, Japan has been consistently uh, supporting the Taiwan's participation in uh, World Health Assembly as observer. Next. Sushilo. I don't know how the diplomats in Japan handle the situation, but uh, the there was a message uh, from the uh, Japanese ambassador in Indonesia. And uh, there was a message sent to the foreign minister in Indonesia from the Japanese ambassador in Indonesia that was uh, about uh, uh, the talks on the uh, bilateral agreements and uh, so on. But uh, 23.40, so 11.40 p.m., the ambassador contacted the foreign minister. Is that an pro appropriate uh, way to contact the foreign minister in Indonesia? So, the of course, we need to take into account the relationship between the Japanese ambassador and the Indonesian foreign minister. Line and short message are quite often used. And I also receive uh, those messages at uh, various hours, late at night or early in the morning. And usually, I check those messages early in the morning. For those people who have communication in such a manner, uh, of course, uh, they will resort to uh, short mails and messages, uh, because that can be uh, done all around the clock, uh, maybe making phone calls, maybe a little bit uh, not polite. But at least that's a common sense for me. But at the same time, even at late at night, short mails and lines can be sent even at late hours. Uh, means that uh, our Japanese ambassador uh, has a good relationship with the, I think, uh, the ministers uh, in the Indonesian, Indonesia as well. Yamamoto-san of NHK. Yamamoto of NHK. 
In the beginning, you talked about uh, warning level on infectious disease. I have two questions. First of all, as of now, level three and uh, 13 new countries have been included to level three list. Yes, that's right. And the uh, countries with uh, increasing spread of infection is shifting, as you said. And some countries are seeing uh, a declining a number of cases. And so when it comes to exit strategy, so to speak, the, how are you going to lower uh, warning level going forward? Well, currently, as I said in the beginning, originally, uh, this uh, infection started in China. This is a uh, COVID-19, and it spread it to South Korea and also Europe, and also uh, spread it to the United States. So against this backdrop, the situation currently is such that, for instance, in Southeast Asia and also uh, South uh, West Asia. In the case of Southeast Asia, including Vietnam, there are countries where the control is being uh, effective. However, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan in South Asia, we cannot be optimistic because the infection number is increasing. And so far, relatively small number of cases are found in the Middle East. However, in such a region, in some countries like Saudi Arabia and UAE with many foreign workers, the infection is spreading. When it comes to Iran, Iran is, I think, uh, maintaining a flat level of the number of cases. However, the, the disease is spreading to Gulf countries currently. And furthermore, with regard to Americas, from North America to uh, South and Latin America, gradually the, sp the disease is spreading. Like countries like uh, Brazil, there are many new cases. Regarding Africa, if I may add, the uh, testing capability uh, is facing a difficulty, perhaps, and also there's a variance among countries. However, all in all, when it comes to Africa, gradual curve is seen in terms of the increase of the number of cases. The population in Africa is about 1.2 billion. Now, India's population, just imagine India's population. So the perhaps uh, we are seeing the similar curve, a pattern of infection uh, spread is being seen uh, between India and Africa. Now let's turn our eye to Europe, Italy and Spain and Germany and France. These countries, to some extent, are now bringing back a stability. But unfortunately for the UK, still the number of cases remain high. Now, when it comes to Russia, very rapidly, the number of infections is increasing, it's growing. Furthermore, Belarus, Russia's uh, neighboring countries, they are seeing the similar situation as it is in Russia. So in this way, countries affected are changing and shifting. Now, among these countries, when it comes to exit uh, strategy, for one thing, uh, in Japan, we have to stop this infection and bring the situation under control. So when we try to open the border to have exchange of people, we have to create a situation in Japan where foreigners are willing to come to Japan. But at the same time, if we Japanese go to other countries, the situation has to be safe and secure in other countries. For example, we have to see the trend of the number of new cases of infection and also medical service delivery system available in those countries and also the number R, reproductive number. So for a certain period of time, we have to follow these uh, indicators in order to make a decision to have uh, exchange of people. So however, as of now, we are not considering any uh, exit strategy now. However, when time comes, we have to consider what would be the best strategy to exit from restrictions. We have to consider the uh, warning level for other countries and also border measures in place. Any other questions? Uh, this will be the last question. I'm Oishi with TV Asahi. 
Around the Senkaku Island,、uh, there are、uh, Chinese、uh, public、uh, vessels showing three days in a row. So, this kind of action has been repeated. And the、uh, vice、uh, spokesman of a、uh, Chinese foreign ministry also mentioned that this is an intervention by the uh, Japanese uh, uh, side. What is your view on that? So, between、uh, Beijing and Tokyo, uh, we uh, strongly protested to the Chinese side in a Several times, and、uh, we strongly、uh, requested to the Chinese side to leave、uh, from the Japanese territorial waters、uh, immediately by avoiding the close to the Japanese fishing boats and tailing. So, close collaboration and cooperation are going to be very much needed, and so we'd like to uh, ask uh, the Japanese, Chinese side to、uh, seek a forward looking response to this. So, this concludes today's press conference. Thank you very much.